Good. Uh, so, hello. Sorry about that. We've had some technical difficulties, but I think we're getting there now. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. We're having some technical difficulties, but I think uh, I think we're getting you all in here. We'll give everybody a chance to join us. Sorry about that. The bottom, maybe, or if we have to click on ours. There they are. All right, let's go. All right. Um, go ahead and write down. Okay. Sorry about the delay, everyone. Uh, we apologize. On it was a technical difficulty on our end, but welcome to our virtual um, workshop for Kentucky Gives Day. I'm Gina Clear. Um, I'm the Communications and Project Coordinator here at Central Kentucky Community Foundation, and I'm joined by our President and CEO, Devette Sweeney. Hey, uh, everybody. Um, so thanks for joining us today um, and for being flexible. We know that uh, uh, we, everybody is changing to uh, more virtual meetings, so we appreciate your flexibility in that. Uh, Kentucky Gives Day has been an important part of our work, and we want to provide the same support and information for you as we have in years past. So for those of us, those of you who've been on a webinar with us before, or with on any webinar. This one is just gonna be a little different. Um, we hope you've downloaded the current version of Zoom and are calling from a phone or making sure your computer has a microphone or a speaker. And um, uh, that way we can easily um, come off mute and participate in the discussion. Um, if you have any questions, we uh, let us know in the chat window and we can take you off of mute. Off of mute. Um, so if you would have your chat window up and going, uh, that'll be lovely. And uh, just let us know in the chat window. I believe it might be minimized at the bottom. You might have to come out of the screen for that. Um, and we'll get you out of mute. So let me take a moment to explain our roles and how you can participate in today's meeting. Um, we're using the Zoom platform, as you all know, and we'll be using the chat feature. Um, if you have a question or comment, just let us know by typing a question mark into the chat box. Uh, remember, this is an interactive webinar, so please share your answers, ideas, or comments, and don't be shy. Um, all you have to do is click on the chat icon at the bottom of the screen and type a question mark. Um, once I see your question mark or Devet sees your question mark, uh, we'll unmute you and announce your name, indicating it's your turn to speak. Uh, please keep in mind you may have muted your phone or you may have uh, muted your computer. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that you're off of mute on your end so that we can hear you once we unmute you on our end. Um, once we shared your comment, we'll once again mute you and I'll call on the next person to speak. Now that we, so now that we know um, what to do and what everybody's part in the webinar is, I'm going to turn it over to the vet to talk a little bit about um, something that's been on everybody's mind, COVID-19. Because that's what we all thought we would start out a Kentucky Gives Day webinar talking about, right? Um, but seriously, we want to recognize the space that we're all in and what's going on. Thank you for joining us virtually. Um, we, um, like you, are disappointed to have to do this virtually because we know that a lot of the value that comes from the Kentucky Gives Day workshop each year is the interaction among the people who attend. 
it's your ideas, it's the energy, the, the synergy that we all create in a room together that helps us all be better, which is the premise of Kentucky Gives Day in the first place, lifting up all of our nonprofits across, across the Commonwealth collectively. Um, but this is the situation we find ourselves in. And, uh, you know, we actually had a question of whether there would still be a Kentucky Gives Day this year um, with everything going on around COVID-19. And I can't think of a more appropriate fundraising opportunity than an online giving day that unites nonprofits right now. So despite the, the challenges that many, uh, many nonprofits are facing that, um, that span everything from um, keeping doors open to service delivery, um, to safety and, and health of staff and volunteers, um, we know that um, in May, we're all gonna need that influx of money um, and that this is a great way to be able to make that happen. So with that, Kentucky Gives Day is still very much um, part of the plan and a big piece of what, um, what we can be focusing our work on today. Um, the impacts that we're gonna see, we know some today, but those are gonna continue for quite a while. And as a community foundation, we wanna be here to help support you in any way that we can. And we're working on some other things um, that that would look like. Hopefully you received an email from us on Friday that talked a little bit about that, um, including information about a virtual town hall on Wednesday that we hope you'll be a part of. And if you've not gotten information on that, feel free to send us an email or information about that. It's gonna be an opportunity where we can all come together, talk about the challenges that we're facing, share some resources, share some ideas, and look at how collectively as nonprofits we can come together um, to get through these situations both today, but those that will continue um, on for the rest of the year and probably even behind, uh, even after that. So I couldn't be, um, couldn't be more excited about those of you that are on the, the webinar today to, uh, to learn more about Kentucky Gives Day. Um, this is our first one, and I know some of you have hosted um, these kind of Zoom meetings and been on lots of them. So give us a little grace and bear with us as we're learning our way this time. Um, we might need a tutorial from a couple of, of you all um, after the fact. But with that, um, we want to get a little bit of information from you. So um, the interactive portion of our Kentucky Gives Day workshop has always been an important piece. So we want to bring that to you virtually today. So um, first of all, we've got just a quick poll. How much has the response to COVID-19 affected your operations as an organization? Um, Gina's gonna pop that poll up here real quick. You can just give a quick, um, quick answer on that. Um, we'll see how those results come in and be able to share them out with you. So how much has the response to COVID-19 affected your operation? Very little, somewhat, considerably, or everything has changed? Give about 15 more seconds here to let those keep coming in. Nobody's saying very little. <laughs> All right, we'll close that poll with 75% saying considerably and 25% saying everything has changed. So given that, I really appreciate you, you chiming, uh, chiming in today for, uh, for this webinar because I know um, I've spent the whole last week trying to regroup and reformulate everything that we're doing and I'm sure you've been doing the same. So we'll be considerate of your time today. Um, and with that, I'll let, um, let Gina get us started on, on rolling through our Kentucky Gives Day workshop. So to get down to the matters at hand, um, before we get started, I want to break the ice a little bit and give us all a chance to talk, um, kind of get that, um, the juices flowing. Um, so when I call on you, if you would, please tell us your name, what organization you're from, and what's your favorite part about working with or volunteering for a nonprofit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of run through my list. Again, I want your name, the organization you're working with, and your favorite part about volunteering or working for the nonprofit. So Hunter, if you would give us your answer, please. Hunter, are you there? Okay, we'll try again. 
I see Jillian there. Jillian, would you mind telling us who you're with and um, and uh, what you like work, do, working with your nonprofit? So yes, my name is Jillian. As you can probably tell, I'm working from home today, but typically I work at Silverleaf. Uh, today, I'm doing work from home and homeschool with my two children. I have no makeup on. This is my COVID work from home face. Um, the reason why that I, I love working in nonprofit, that was the question, correct? Mm -hmm. um, is that <clears throat> uh, you don't have the pressure that comes working with a for-profit. Um, and knowing that our, our goal as an agency is truly to serve the individuals in our mission. Um, now granted, there's other stresses, but that's not what you ask about. So the thing that I love is that we get to focus on <laughs> serving people and not necessarily generating a whole bunch of money. Absolutely. We're focusing on the positive today, Jillian. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, if you wouldn't mind sharing. I don't know if. Uh, Jennifer, are you there? She might not have a mic. We'll try again. Um, Hunter Roberts says that she doesn't have her microphone available, but she's on and works for United Way of Central Kentucky. Thanks for joining us, Hunter. Awesome. Thank you, Hunter. Um, uh, Michelle Critchlow. Michelle, are you there? Yes, I am. If you wouldn't mind I'm Michelle. telling us your name and what organization you're from and what's your favorite part about nonprofit work. Um, I'm Michelle Critchlow. I work for Big Brother, Big Sister of Kentuckyana. Um, my favorite part of working for this organization is helping the kids in our community and help them find the needs and the wants that they need um, throughout their uh, childhood. Wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. And we just heard from Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, for clicking on that uh, uh, chat window there. Uh, she says she doesn't have a microphone, but she's with St. James Catholic School and excited to be a part of Kentucky Gifts Day again this year. We're so excited it's not been canceled. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Thanks Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. And I'll wrap up our sharing time since I know several people don't have microphones and we don't want to spend too much of our webinar on this. Um, but I like working for a nonprofit. Um, because I get to work with so many great people at all of our nonprofits in the region. And really it's, um, it's the people like you all that are on this webinar today that, that I find so satisfying and inspiring to work with and the passions that you all have for each of your organizations. It sort of fuels our work every day here at the foundation. Yes, and I, and I love working with you all um, as part of what we do here at Central Kentucky Community Foundation. I love building relationships with other people. And Kentucky Gifts Day is such a great um, instrument to do that. And um, I, I love being here and, and being uh, a support uh, during Kentucky Gifts Day. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thanks again to Beth for, for joining us. And, and this again is one of my favorite times of year. I know it's, it's hard to look past the here and now, but we're crossing our fingers that May 12th, we're back to somewhat of a normal routine and that people will be itching for some kind of interactive and community experience through Kentucky Gives Day. So we're less than eight weeks away um, from Kentucky Gives Day, which is May 12th. So mark those calendars, May 12th is Kentucky Gives Day. Um, for those of you who've never participated in Kentucky Gives Day, it's a day full of energy and excitement. Um, and I, I hope you can hear it in my voice. I, I get pumped up over Kentucky Gives Day. I sleep very little that day. I love um, helping and watching and, and um, drumming up our social media during the day. And I love all the work that leads into uh, Kentucky Gives Day as well. Um, because I know that it's not just, it's, it's, it's just a, a wonderful benefit for our community. 
um, and for our local nonprofits. Um, so from midnight to 11.59 p.m. on May 12th, nonprofits will fill our social media feeds with all the wonderful work that we do and raise awareness and money for our missions. Um, so again, we're gonna launch another poll here real quick. Another 15 second poll. Have you ever participated in Kentucky Gives Day? Okay. All right, that's a good mix. Um, so we've got seven who have and three who have not. Um, so we're gonna be leaning on our seven yeses here a little bit later on to talk about um, you know, your experience with Kentucky Gives Day in the past, what you've learned, some pointers and tips that you might have uh, for our, our newbies. Um, so those of you that have not participated, we welcome you. And um, again, we're here for uh, your support. Um, so go ahead and flip that slide there. Wonderful. Okay, so Kentucky Gives Day, this is the seventh year for it, and it's our fourth year um, on our end being a regional sponsor. Um, but we do more than just sponsor. We're here as a resource to you as you plan for a successful giving day. Um, so please lean on us whenever you need us. Um, when we support our nonprofits and come together, uh, we make a stronger Kentucky, a stronger region, and a stronger community. Um, online giving days are, very, are a very affordable and attractive way for nonprofits to raise needed funds for their mission um, and to tell their story uh, or tell all the stories of the clients that you uh, serve, uh, the, the success stories that come out of your organization. This is your chance to really capitalize on those and, and uh, use those for uh, the betterment of your mission. So think of it as a, a Facebook fundraiser. I know you've probably seen your friends who um, have, instead of in lieu of gifts, I want um, donations to my favorite nonprofit. Um, it's kind of the same here and there are gonna be opportunities for that as well. Um, so it, it your nonprofit friends are participating and they're also generating even more traffic for the giving day. So not only are you using your audience um, that you've generated for your donors, but in contacts and emails and social media, but you're also leaning on the power of the networks of all of our other nonprofits here in Kentucky um, that they've created so that together we can do more for Kentucky Gives Day. Um, so last year was our most successful year thus far. Um, where 22 of our nonprofits raised about raised $92,637 combined. And that's just in our region. That's not across the state. Um, so that, that came from 617 donors. Um, and that was more than 30,000 more than the previous year and nearly double the number of donors reached. And while these numbers are incredibly impressive, What's more impressive is most of this giving has occurred in the last two years. Um, so we're gonna need to go one more here. So here's what some of our participants have said in the past about Kentucky Gives Day. Um, you can see there on the screen, I'm not gonna insult you by reading to you, um, but is there anyone else that would like to share some insight or something that they've learned from their experience in the past year? And of course, I'm, I'm leaning on um, our friends that have participated before. Um, and if you have a response, if you'll type a question mark in the chat window, and we'll unmute you so that we can uh, get a response from you.
I know it takes a second for the chat window to come through. All right, Suzetta, hi. Thanks for joining us, Suzetta. Um, so she says we love participating in Kentucky Gives Day. We like it because we are a statewide organization and it helps us reach everyone. So that's wonderful. Um, again, you know, when you have multiple nonprofits participating in one giving day all together, you're not just relying on the power of your social media alone and your donors and your volunteers, but we're relying on a network of nonprofit supporters throughout the, throughout the state. I think one thing that stood out for me is that nearly 50% were new donors, were first time donors. And that's exactly what we're wanting to see help organizations um, is expand that donor base. Um, we wanna grow those gifts any way that we can, but when you expand your donor base, you're really building that capacity for the future. Um, and Suzetta also added that she likes it because it's not competitive, but inclusive and all non for all nonprofits, and it lets us lift up everyone's work. So um, that's a wonderful point, Suzetta. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I think I got a little crazy with the mouse here, so it jumped <laughs> around a lot. So sorry about that, Gina. There you go. I got you back on. That's okay. Sorry. Thank you. So online fundraising is the way of today. Um, we used to say it was the way of the future, but as you know, um, especially with uh, our work from home situations in a lot of cases, um, virtual is the way of now. Um, so it's becoming more and more prevalent that nonprofits use digital media to enhance their giving opportunities. And I'm gonna let the vet speak more. But Kentucky Gives Day is more than just fundraising opportunity. That's the crux of it, but we also want to make sure that people understand that it's much more than that and that there's lots of ways to measure success in Kentucky Gives Day. Um, as Gina mentioned, this virtual world that we've all been thrust into the last week, and Julian, I appreciate your honesty about the, uh, the makeup deal. I put some on today for the first time in about three days and went, wow. I really miss having to do this every day. <laughs> um, but the beauty of Kentucky Gives Day is that people can uh, put those online gifts, whether they put on makeup or whether they're still in their, their uh, nighttime PJs at 7 p.m. Uh, we're all enjoying these memes, right? Um, but, but from a fundraising standpoint, Kentucky Gives Day has a lot of opportunity for people. Um, but it's also about harnessing your organization, coming together around things and figuring out what's important for you to measure. And so each year, we encourage organizations to, to determine what success looks like for you because what success looks like for each organization is different. Um, you may want to focus on gathering uh, those new donors or you may want to focus on your board rallying together around having a match um, and the encouragement that that creates. You know, one year we had an organization that said they participated in the biggest thing that they gained out of it was realizing they did not have email addresses for most of their donors and contacts. So they came away uh, not having raised very much money, but with a work plan for the coming year of how would they caught their, their database up um, to this decade. And they went from there. Um, but if you looked at their measure of success as the dollars that they raised, it would not have appeared that they were very successful. So um, recognize where your organization is and set, um, set goals that relate to, to what's most appropriate for you and, and use that as, as your uh, plan of work for Kentucky Gives Day for the coming, coming year. This can include you know, a certain number of gifts or raising your average gift amount um, or, or identifying a better way to tell your story. Sometimes Kentucky Gives Day forces us to focus on that storytelling and, and getting more uh, effective at telling the, the mission that we work on every day. Um, sometimes it's hard for us. We, we do it all day long. We're passionate about it, but are we good at telling it to other people? And working through building that Kentucky Gives Day page can sometimes help, um, help develop that story. So here's how Kentucky Gives Day works. Uh, the Kentucky Nonprofit Network and GiveGab have developed a program that provides you with everything you need uh, to make Kentucky Gives Day work for your organization. 
Uh, you'll have an online giving portal through GiveGab um, that you customize to tell your story. So everybody's profile, although it has a similar makeup, will all look different, will all feel different because we all have different stories to tell. Um, so you can add photos, videos, and language uh, to help you tell both um, your story both visually and verbally. Uh, KNN and GiveGab offer great training as uh, Kentucky Gives at KentuckyGivesDay.org. So that's uh, definitely the website that you need to um, favorite bookmark. It's KYGives.org. So again, KYGives.org. Um, before May 12th, you want to build your email list and promote your mission and the giving day on social media. Uh, this will allow you to connect with donors and drive your traffic to your giving page on the big day, which is May 12th. <laughs> um, so as we go to the next slide before Gina picks that up, um, a comment from Jennifer Moran at St. James, who's had some great success over the last couple of years. And she said that they don't have a lot of online giving at St. James, so Kentucky Gives Day provides that platform at least one day in the year where they can reach those who are connected um, to St. James School on social media also helps facilitate out-of-town donors um, who get on board and want to be part of the fund. So if your organization doesn't have online giving um, outside of Kentucky Gives Day, this does give you that platform, not just for Kentucky Gives Day, but year-round um, to accept gifts online. I know years ago when Kentucky Gives Day started, seven years ago, a lot of organizations weren't able to accept gifts um, online. Now, most of you probably already have that, um, have that uh, capability, but if you don't, this, um, this does take care of that for you, um, not just on May 12th, but year round as well. So um, on top of what you give with GiveGab, it works on all internet accessible devices, tablets, um, mobile devices. Um, it has customizable online profile and thank yous. Um, so that's kind of big. It makes it easy for you to tell your story and customize for your brand. Um, they have prepared toolkits, um, including an eight week communication plan. We are seven weeks out. So that eight week is, um, is, now. Uh, is now. Yes, yeah, you've got to combine week seven and eight to make that work for you. <laughs> but um, so that's there and available. Um, and uh, Kentucky Gives Day graphics are available at, at kygives.org as well. Um, so you can download all of those uh, profile pictures for Twitter and Facebook um, and also uh, the cover images as well. Uh, to participate, you must be a 501c3 and each donate, donation made to a participating nonprofit will be dispersed directly from GiveGab's payment processor, which is Stripe, to be a direct deposit to your bank account within three business days. So three days, May 15th, after May 12th, you uh, should see the money in your money. account. Yes, cha-ching. <laughs> um, so uh, the GiveGab platform provides each donor with the option to cover the cost of platform and processing fees, which is good at the time of the donation. So they, they ask your donors if they wanna opt in to pay to cover those fees for you. Um, and this option allows participating nonprofits to realize the full amount of the intended donation. And we found that last year, nearly 79% of donors paid for that. Um, so that is a positive. 79% um, of donations that came in the donor said, yeah, I've got that, I've got that fee covered. Um, so that you saw the full amount of their donation. Um, for those of you that are wondering, ACH means automated clearinghouse, um, which you are um, automatic, which are automatic transfers from your, from their bank account to your bank account. Um, ACH donations must be a minimum of $100. So we talked a little bit about how that works from a technology standpoint and the, the cost for those gifts. And 
um, oftentimes get questions here about, well, you know, so we give up that percentage for accepting those online gifts and those credit card transactions. And yes, absolutely you do. Um, but there's cost in any kind of fundraising. And when it comes to, um, to a lot of other options, um, this 3% fee, the credit card fee, plus the transaction fee is really pretty low. Um, direct mail events, anybody that uh, has done much event fundraising knows that you're not gonna do that for 3%. And actually right now, if you're having an in-person event, you're probably not gonna be on it at all for a while. So we, uh, it's hard sometimes, it's, it seems like a tough pill to swallow when you think about, it. I know I'm automatically giving up 3%, um, but a lot of times our other fundraising enterprises give up a higher percent, it's just not, as obvious and not as clearly assessed. So um, I always encourage people, if you really do a deep dive and look at what your fundraising costs you um, and are honest about it, it's probably gonna exceed exceed 3%. This is at least a flat fix and you know what, what that's going to be. Um, we always wanna try to keep those fundraising costs down because we know that from an organization standpoint, that's important, but also from a donor perception that that's important. People don't like to think about a lot of their money going um, to cover um, what they consider overhead or the cost of raising the dollars. Um, I think this has become less and less of an issue each year that we've done Kentucky Gives Day because people have just gotten familiar with it in their personal lives and their, in their um, church giving and lots of other places. Um, whereas once it seemed to make people um, take a little bit more of a gulp. Um, so um, that's what that fee looks like um, for, the, for the donors. But again, um, last year it was nearly 80% of people just click that button um, to cover the fees as well. I know I did, I did some of my personal giving through Kentucky Gives Day since um, it's one of our initiatives. And it's, it's right up there, it says, okay, your $100 gift now becomes $103. Do you want to click this box to cover that cost for your organization? And it was a real easy, easy thing to click yes and a real easy decision to make because I think, well, it's three more dollars. If I'm going to give somebody a hundred dollars, I'm probably willing to give them a hundred and three, but you know how much those three dollars add up to the organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, we find the most success uh, when a donor's giving um, impact is clearly defined with customized amounts um, in, your, in your unique descriptions and photos on your giving profile at kygives.org. Um, you can use Kentucky Gives Day to fund a specific project or initiative or just as an overall fundraising effort for your mission. You wanna identify target giving amounts. For instance, $40 will spay a cat or $50 provides food for three families for a week, et cetera. Um, so think about those uh, cost analysis, how you can break those down and publicize those on your giving profiles. Um, so when it comes to your organization's friends, ask your board and your volunteers to reach out and tell them to ask five of their friends to give. Um, matches also have been uh, the most, have seen the most success in helping to persuade donors. Um, people love to give when they know that their donation is being doubled. Um, so I've seen some organizations apply this in a couple different ways. Some have a match for the entire day. Um, they've secured a $5,000, $10,000 match from a large donor. Um, and they just said, you know, we are applying this to the whole day. Every dollar for dollar, every dollar that's given up to $10,000 will be matched. Um, and then others have secured smaller matches, you know, $1,000, $2,000 for different giving times, maybe to uh, power up those power hours um, where you can earn extra prizes um, during those times. Uh, so it's a matter of strategy and figuring out how you want to apply those matches. Um, it might be good to uh, apply them to the beginning of the day to get that giving going. Um, so completely up to you. Um, but they, they love to give when they know their donation will be doubled. So their $5 donation, if that's all they have to give, doesn't feel quite so small. Um, so if you secure a match though, be sure to record it in your giving profile. 
um, so that your donors will see it. Because we had a couple organizations last year who secured a match but didn't report it. And therefore, people giving to that organization had no idea that their money was being matched um, dollar for dollar there. Um, and I'm not going to say that that helped or hurt them. Um, but statistically, um, again, people are more willing to give when they know there's a, a match. Um, so with that, with that, um, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back one more. Um, have a, we'll, we'll start another discussion here. Um, anybody wanna share uh, how they customized their profile last year? Um, maybe something that you highlighted in the giving profile um, to help secure some donations? And again, you can type a question mark if you have a microphone um, and I'll unmute you or you can type a comment in the chat window here. So like giving profile is a real important place where you can show off your organization. You can make it unique. You can do that with videos, photos, data, all the kinds of things to make your organization stand out. You definitely want it to be branded so that it looks like all of your social media and things that you've been sending out about Kentucky Gives Day. So when somebody's looking through those lists, they, they, are, they see the familiar, they see yours. And we know everybody takes a different approach. So any, anything that, those of you that have done it before, we've got several past participants that you felt like made your successful. Hi, Sharon, welcome. We'll see if anybody types some things in in a minute. We can share that. We'll keep rolling on with the um, rest of the information. Uh, Jennifer Moran, photos and videos. Yes, photos and videos. Anything that makes it real, um, that makes it personal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely key. Um, some, you know, and, and those images and videos that you use on that profile, you also want to use in your social media. So it's something uh, that you're seeing in both places. Um, so here's where you can really involve your board and your volunteers and, and, um, and regular supporters of your organization. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is an emerging trend. Like we discussed earlier, the thing, like the Facebook fundraisers. Here's where people are going to lobby and campaign on your behalf um, on, on this giving day. So it allows those who believe in your mission to not only raise money for you, but it also allows them to share their personal connection with your organization. Uh, when you get others to tell your story, you can be successful. So on average, organizations using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising raised 3.4 times more than those who didn't use peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers last year. Um, an average total raise using peer-to-peer -peer is about $6,306, and those that don't use peer-to-peer -peer is $1,908. Um, so for more on the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, go to the nonprofit toolkit on kygives.org and they can take you through peer-to-peers uh, -peer and how to set those up on your giving profile. Um, so, but again, this is where you lean on your board members. This is where you lean on your volunteers and those who um, show you support regularly, even some regular donors you might be able to lean on uh, for this one as well. Um, so what we know, number one, is the most successful organizations have a plan and a timeline and they work it. Um, you can't expect to register and just watch the money roll in on Kentucky Gives Day. One post on Facebook or Twitter will not lead to a successful campaign. And with that said, it's not all meant, it's not meant to be all consuming. This is not supposed to consume all your work and of your organization. Um, it, it, and you have a platform that makes these goals achievable. So make sure to record and record sponsor matching donations to your organization's giving profile. And donors are more likely to give when they know their donations will be matched dollar for dollar. So um, with, that, with that said, I have a video from a participant from last year. This is Sarah Fellows, a member of the Friends of Hardin County Animal Shelter. Um, and she's a member of their board. 
Uh, she's going to talk about their Kentucky Give Say experience last year. Hey, Sarah Fellow with the Friends of the Hardy County Animal Shelter, and I want to share a little bit about our experience with the Kentucky Give Say program. I'm a little bit nervous about doing it because all of us work full time, so we weren't really sure about the time that we needed to do but that kind of an effort. But the support that the uh, Central Kentucky Community Foundation gives uh, through Kentucky Give Say with uh, social media and networking. Um, really made a huge difference uh, for, for us being able to be successful um, and that support was just key. Um, for us, we had a specific goal and, and a couple of the things that we learned, I wanted to pass on uh, things that we will do better this year and things that I think we did okay with last year. Uh, the first one was setting a specific goal. Um, I think it's really key to be able to do that. Um, we, we had a transport van that needed replacing. And so being able to name exactly what that money needed to go for uh, was, I think, really, really helpful because it helped people kind of put their finger on exactly what we were going to use that money for. And it gave us a really good visual. And having a visual and having uh, photos around that are going to be really, really key um, to whatever you're doing. But it was certainly for us as well. Um, plan ways to connect with the audience. This was the other big takeaway from last year. Uh, something I think that we did fairly well. Uh, and one of the reasons why um, I think we were able to tell our story well is because we were able to connect with the audience through personal of course, for us, it's pretty easy because we have two dogs and cats to do that group. Uh, but being able to, to name things and to picture things um, that are really specific to your cause, I think that that's, uh, that was huge for us uh, to be able to tell those stories and to plan those stories out and, and post them frequently uh, before and during um, the give say was, was, I think, one of the, the big factors in us being able to successfully raise some money on Kentucky Give Say. Um, and photos, of course, are a huge part of that. So making sure you have really good photos and really good stories to talk going into it. Um, that's one of the things that we, I, again, I think we did okay, but that's certainly something we're going to continue to grow uh, as we continue to be part of it. Make sure you share the link. Um, every time you post, make sure you share the link and plan those posts out so that that happens often uh, during the Kentucky Give Say. We did ours, um, I think, every like two hours. Uh, I think we'll have a post more often. Uh, this time because again I think just continues to, to spread and gives Kentucky Give Say people uh, something to continue to, to talk about and to spread as well. Um, I want to be I, I want us to be more involved in um, in the uh, power hours and things like that. So we're looking at ways to really uh, do that a little bit more this year. That's something that I don't think we did as well last year that I definitely want to do this year. And then thanking our supporters uh, we really tried to do this but again we'll be looking for additional ways uh, to do that. So we were able to raise about uh, half of what, what our big goal was. Our goal was ten thousand dollars, which is a lot. Uh, we had no idea what to expect, but being able to raise about five thousand of that, and then some things that came in after that, just because of our exposure with Kentucky Give Say, uh, was huge. So it was definitely, um, I mean, it was just a really big push for us, um, and to move us from, toward being able to get that van, and we're able to really kind of secure that pretty soon after because of Kentucky Give Say. So. Um, I would encourage you to, uh, to do whatever you can to be a part of that because it, uh, it really can make a difference for your organization. Wow. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, just I, so just after having been um, a part of Kentucky Gives Day for several years now, if I had to say the, the three main things that organizations do that are successful, it's have a match, it's have something specific that you're raising the money for, quantify it in some way, and have one person in charge. It doesn't mean that one person does all the work, but somebody in your organization is driving that train that is, is organizing and staying on top of it, putting you know two or three hours a week into whatever it is time to do and keeping that moving. Those three things um, have been the, the common denominators we've seen over the years from those organizations are, that are successful. The ones that register on the deadline day and that send out an email the day before and make a Facebook post on the day of and then are disappointed because they didn't raise any money um, are pretty easy to, to predict um, and they don't raise any money. It does take a little bit of effort, um, but it's a great way to harness some energy and raise some dollars. And I absolutely, Suzetta, thank you for sharing. I love what Suzetta uh, shares with us here is that we use our board members holding up thank you notes. We also did hourly gift card, gift card drawings and posted on Twitter. 
us drawing out the names of the donors. So that was fun for their organization. Um, so they were able to, uh, to secure some gift cards um, to keep the uh, um, party going on their social media feeds uh, to have people tune in for those regular drawings. So that's a great idea, Susetta, thank you. Um, so uh, the best part about an online giving day is that the money is electronically transferred to you within three days, um, three business days following Kentucky Gives Day. And uh, the donations are tax deductible for donors. So several donors take the option to cover those fees as we mentioned at 78%. So with all that said, I'm sure you're like, where do I sign up? There it is, kentuckygives.org. Uh, we are gonna be on, uh, uh, the, the deadline to register is April 14th. So that's just right around the corner. Um, Heather, thank you for joining us. Um, again, registration, April 14th. It's free if you're a K&N member. Um, so if you're not a K&N member, you can look at the feed to participate in Kentucky Giving Day, um, which is $300, or decide if you're better off joining k &N, which is based on your budget. And again, that's not something that we don't get anything, the foundation doesn't get anything off of, and I probably should have uh, talked to that at the beginning. We don't get anything out of your participation. Uh, we don't get any percentage of that 3%. Um, we're not in it for anything other than as a convener and a regional partner to help make this happen. Um, KNN puts a lot of effort into this project for the state, so they do provide that as a member service um, or an option to pay a one-time fee to participate if you aren't a member. For most of you, um, the, the KNN membership will be cheaper than a one-time fee and then you get the benefit of their work throughout the year, which I will give major props out for everything that they've been doing in the past week, advocating for nonprofits, sharing information back out to all of us about what's going on and trying to make sure that not the nonprofit community is included in some of the relief packages and things that are, are going on and working with funders on um, relief for grant restrictions and modifications and things. So um, I'll do a shameless plug right now for what um, they've been doing and providing support. Um, but as a membership organization, um, they, do, they do make it free for members and, and a fee base for, for those who are not um, current k &N members. Um, but again, we're glad to be their partner. Um, five years ago, there were two organizations in this region that participated in Kentucky Gives Day, and we saw that, um, that it could benefit more, and moving to the more digital age of giving would have value for organizations, so we stepped in as a regional partner. You may, if you look at um, Kentucky Gives Day registrations, you will see Central Kentucky Community Foundation listed as a participant. We do not fundraise on Kentucky Gives Day. We are not competing with you for those donor dollars, but as the regional partner platform, we will show up on the list. If somebody clicked and made a gift to us, we would take it, but we are not out there working and trying to get gifts, and therefore, because we're not working, we've never gotten one on Kentucky <laughs> Gifts Day, which is a great example of what happens if you don't work a plan for it, and you think you can just put yourself out there, you won't get gifts. Um, but we're, we're not about competing with you on that day, but we, as a partner, have to be registered and showing. On their KNN does raise money for their membership organization, um, but uh, you will not see us out there um, publicizing our organization as a, as a potential recipient of Kentucky Gives Day gifts. Uh, to join KNN, just go to email us at uh, kentuckynonprofits.org or you can go to the uh, kentuckynonprofits.org website to join. Um, so one of the requirements for participating in Kentucky Gives Day is that you must be registered with the Kentucky Attorney General. Um, if you're actively raising money in other states, you may be required to register funds with those states as well. Um, so initial registration includes your most recent IRS Form 990, your IRS determination letter, a copy of your bylaws, and a copy of your articles of incorporation. Um, and you also need, if you're just returning to register, it is an annual registration. Um, if you are a returning registrant, then all you need is a copy of your IRS Form 990. 
And just by the way, that's a legal requirement in the state of Kentucky to fundraise. It's not just a requirement for Kentucky Giving Day. So we've heard a lot of organizations over the years have an aha moment when we shared that, that they had not been doing it, that they had no idea they were supposed to. So um, as part of best practice, organizations can't participate in our collective day if they're not in compliance with that part of the fundraising law for the state of Kentucky. So um, just get that into the Kentucky Office of the Attorney General. Um, and that's part of the reason for the deadline on April 14th to give that time to get processed. Absolutely, and uh, there is no uh, filing fee with that. So it is free to file. Um, so once you register, you're in. And then it's up to you to get your game plan together based off of the goals you want to achieve for Kentucky Gives Day. Uh, the good news is that there are plenty of resources to help you on your way. There's us, Central Kentucky Community Foundation. There's uh, KentuckyGives.org, as we mentioned. and all of our friends here that you're, you're meeting um, virtually here through our webinar. Um, we're, we're all wonderful resources. We're all willing to share ideas. Um, so after we conclude, I'll send you a copy of our checklist for success as a resource for you. I'll send you a link to that. Um, just as a way to say thank you for joining us today. Um, and let me go back one more. Um, when you are posting to Facebook and Twitter, you want to make sure to use the hashtag KYGives20. Now, it's more important on Twitter than it is on Facebook to use those hashtags, um, but make sure that you are hashtagging KYGives20 there. Um, that's something that we can all do in unison to uh, draw attention to Kentucky Gives Day. So our checklist for success. Um, you want to mark your calendars, you want to select a staff member or volunteers, your point person, as the vet mentioned earlier, is one of those tips for success. And in looking at the third point, for example, um, you can treat the giving day as a capacity building exercise um, and use it to highlight a program or cultivate new donors. Um, so make sure to develop and build a communication plan around clear goals. Uh, those goals can include a specific number of new donors, social media post reach, peer-to-peer -peer giving goals, uh, securing a match. It's completely up to you, um, but make sure that it meets your goals and your mission for your nonprofit. Um, so you can find uh, the Kentucky Gives Day um, toolkit at KentuckyGives.org. Um, enlist volunteers who are tech savvy to help start recruiting matching and, and start recruiting matching donations. Um, you can employ several matches to increase giving throughout the day or put matches into one lump category for the entire day. It's a strategy that you all have to figure out what works best for your organization. Um, and, and it's up to you which ones you employ. Um, your donors might be used to, did I go too far? Yeah, I did. I apologize. Um, your donors might be used to giving at a particular time of the year. So you'll want them to put the day on their calendar now and be ready to give when it um, comes time for May 12th. And I would say this year gives a unique opportunity for that ask. And I know sometimes people are hesitant to, um, you know, to ask donors, they always give at a different time of year or during your annual campaign or a particular fundraiser to make that ask again. Um, but this year is a unique situation. And I think um, pointing out what your organization is doing and what your organization is doing based with, that will be very quantifiable by May 12th. Um, we've seen lots of you making major transitions in how you deliver client services and how you carry out your missions and how you meet what you're doing. That's not been easy. It's not been cheap. Um, and you're probably staring down decreased fundraising dollars. Um, tell that story. Um, it doesn't have to be a pity party, um, but it can be realistic and say, this is what we're doing. This is why our services still matter. They probably matter more today than they mattered a month ago make that pitch. Mm -hmm. Only you can tell that story. And um, as we'll talk about in our virtual town hall on Wednesday, we have to make that part of the narrative because nobody else is making that part of the narrative yet. Mm -hmm. So 
over the coming weeks, look at what that translates to for your organization. Um, so create a giving plan for the day with regular donors and volunteers willing to give at specific times to persuade others to give. Um, one of the best maneuvers um, a nonprofit can do is have two or three of your regular donors ready to give once it turns midnight. Um, find some of your younger people who are awake at that time, maybe not in my generation, <laughs> but some of you still might be awake at midnight come May 12th that can get that party rolling so that when the rest of the world rolls out of bed at, at 6, 7 a.m., they see money by your name. And when they see money by your name, they are more apt to give at that time. Um, you know, if, if there's still a goose egg by your name, it's going to take something to get those dollars to start rolling in. So a good plant is a good strategy to have as well. Um, and, and have those plants um, spread out throughout the day at specific times that you want to target um, the giving. Um, so another thing that you want to do is create FOMO. Anybody know FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. You want to, you want to have the FOMO beast on your side. Um, so start telling stories on your page, on your blogs, on your social media, on your website. Use hashtag KYGives20. Um, consider hosting an offline event if we're allowed to um, come that time at uh, an open house um, or, you know, join us. Uh, we're still planning on hosting some kind of um, offline event so join us for we're that still we're still considering we're still hoping that we can do that come may 12 we're crossing our fingers that we're going to be allowed out of our houses by then um so we also um will be um us ckcf will also be promoting kentucky gifts day in general on our facebook twitter blog website etc um Insta we also use our instagram um, to help promote that as well um, so feel free uh, to share it and let people know that you're participating. We try to tag our organizations in a couple of those posts leading up to the day. So um, uh, keep in contact with me. When I send you an email, please reply back because it's most likely me seeking some information uh, to help our social feeds be um, successful, uh, tagging our friends on, on those social posts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we want to give our friends and your friends and all of our friends, the community, a reason uh, to participate. And we want them to feel part of that community that day so that they won't be the person that's left in the dark. Um, so, and we can't say enough about the last part on, uh, on this page. Um, giving is an emotional activity. So tell those engaging stories to help people engage and see how they can play a part in making a difference. Because, you know, when, when they come to a nonprofit, Facebook feed, social media feed, website, et cetera, they most likely are looking for a way to make a difference. So give them that reason, engage them, uh, tell that story. Um, video is the top way to engage users on social media and it's okay to use a cell phone to create a video. It doesn't have to be some professional production. You're seeing it all over the world right now. People are singing from their balconies in Italy. Yes, Italy, we know you have balconies. Congratulations. But they're, they're singing from balconies. People are producing music videos from their roofs or their bedrooms. We have artists and um, celebrities all over the world either singing songs on the internet using their cell phone or um, reading a book to children um, in, their, in their living room. So it doesn't have to be a professional quality video to be engaging. Um, so when you, um, when people make gifts, to your organization on Kentucky Gives Day, you can set up an automatic email response for donors when you set up your giving profile. Please do that. Um, that is so important um, to thank those donors and there's no easier way to do it than have that automatic email response set up. But with that, let me encourage you to not let that be the end. So 
Um, everybody sort of knows when they get an automatic email, right? Because about three seconds after you click make payment, you get an email. That's not very personal. Um, you don't feel very loved from that. You feel receipted. You don't feel thanked. So um, make sure that after you do that, that you send them a legitimate thank you that is not just about a tax receipt, that is an acknowledgement of their gift and their choosing to engage with you and your organization. And then beyond that, Kentucky Gives Day isn't over on May 12th. It's not even over on May 13th. If it does for your organization what we want it to do, then those people are part of your organization in June and July and November and in 2021. Part of your work now is figuring out what that plan looks like. How do you incorporate them into your regular communications to your donor correspondence so that you really are onboarding new donors, not just accepting some new gifts? That will become the difference in receiving some gifts this year and growing your donor base, growing your engagement, growing your supporters. Um, that's where I get on a little bit of a soapbox. And if I'm preaching now, I'm sorry. But I can tell you as somebody that's made gifts to Kentucky Gifts Day for seven years, fewer organizations than do, do I ever hear anything else from. And the ones that I do, I remember. Um, I may still give to ones that I care about what they do, but I care about the organizations that have incorporated me in, and I'm not making this about me personally, but I'm sure that if that's been my experience, that's been others' experience. And we, we are all collectively judged as a nonprofit community on how any one organization acts. So if, I make, if somebody makes a gift and one organization doesn't make them, they say, oh, those nonprofits, they, aren't, they don't appreciate gifts. They don't just say X, Y, Z organization and appreciate it. We all pay for the actions of each other. Um, so with that, I'll get down off my soapbox now <laughs> and um, say that those are critical pieces to, to your day and to your, and to your relationships beyond just Kentucky Gifts Day. So with that, and there's a quick little poll, 15 seconds. Think back on uh, those of you that participated last year. Think about, um, did you engage those donors at any other point in time throughout the year? That's good to see. That's good to see. These are people that care, and that's why they're on the webinar. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> so uh, six, our six participants from last year, 100%. Uh, uh, did uh, engage in one form of an, or another afterwards. Awesome. All right, so don't miss out. Um, our next um, workshop, hopefully we will be able to have it in person. If not, it will be another um, webinar and online uh, experience. Uh, we're going to have a marketing uh, plan uh, workshop on Monday, April 16th at 1.30. Um, hopefully here, in, like I said, in the community hall um, at Central Kentucky Community Foundation at our home of philanthropy. Um, so be sure to register um, by April 14th and join us for that digital workshop. Uh, you'll want to be, you'll want to bring your Kentucky Gifts Day team on that day to the workshop along with a laptop or tablet. Um, our friend and social media expert, Matt McDougall, will be here to help uh, help you develop a plan and workshop around executing it. We're about to get to the end of what we've got to present, but if you've got any questions and you want to go ahead and start typing those in the chat, then we'll be able to answer questions as long as you're on me, we can get off um, the webinar here. But I'll say last year, we, um, we engaged Matt to come in and do a digital marketing workshop for folks. And it was really helpful. We had we had identified that as a barrier for some of our organizations to either participate in Kentucky Gives Day at all or to have a successful Kentucky Gives Day um, program because they just didn't even know what they didn't know about social media. Um, we started with one organization sitting there um, last year who created an email account so that somebody could then create a Facebook account and they could get rolling. Um, so Matt was very helpful in, in moving them along and connecting some younger folks, helping folks find 
somebody um, in their organization or somebody in their organization who had a grandson or a niece that would be willing to sort of adopt them as a volunteer effort and help get um, help get them moving in the social realm. And so that's what Matt's going to do for us again uh, this year. Um, and I would say that even if you came last year, it'll be a different uh, different experience this year because everything in social has changed from, from a year ago. Um, the algorithms, what works, what didn't work, his recommendations I'm sure will have adjusted a lot. So um, whether it's um, in person or more than likely a virtual meeting, um, please make plans to be in on that. Any questions come in before we, um, before we hop off here? Mm -hmm. Thank you all for suffering through with us. Uh, thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for your interest in Kentucky Gives Day. Um, somebody waving out a question or just waving hi? Um, uh, there we go. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We are so glad you all joined. Waiting from our <laughs> virtual, our virtual hot spots. <laughs> uh, if you do have questions that you can ask here, any clarification, I know. Several of you have done it before. Some of you are new. We do this, you know, for people that are considering not sure if they want to do Kentucky Gives Day to help get a lot of information out there. But feel free to um, um, shoot Gina an email. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll be glad to get <laughs> anything answered. Uh, That's what I'm here for. So don't forget, Kentucky Gives Day, May 12th. And be sure to follow CKCF, Central Kentucky Community Foundation, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, follow Kentucky Gives Day on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, for all the updates on that. So we will see you next time. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you, too. Mm -hmm.